正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 134, Invitation. Shen Miao was slightly startled and looked up towards Zi Jingxing again. In the Ming Chi, there was no place that would put up a resistance to Zi Jingxing. He was too familiar with everything. Naturally, he was familiar as he grew up in the Ding capital and knew every crook and cranny of it like the back of his hand. In addition, he also had the backing of the Feng's Yan Pawn Shop, a station that buys and sells information. Perhaps Zi Jingxing's eyes and ears, as compared to Fu Ziyu Yi's, were not inferior in any way and even in excess. He naturally was able to know what he wanted to know about. What does this have to do with you? Shen Miao said in a bad tone, "Your Highness Prince Ru, I really have leisure time to worry about other people's household matters. Household matters." Zi Jingxing raised his brows, seemingly finding that the words were quite good. You seem to be afraid of that surname Chang female. A trace of coldness flashed in Shen Miao's eyes, and she said, "Just a relative that seeks shelter. What is there to be afraid of? Not right." Zi Jingxing stroked his chin as he swept a look at her. He suddenly leaned over and carefully stared at Shen Miao's eyes. He did not feel anything was wrong when he leaned so near and paused a moment before saying, "A female from the Liu province, and you have never go to the Liu province. So why is it that you seem to understand her?" Shen Miao suddenly looked up and stared straight into Zi Jingxing's eyes. That youth's features were as always breathtaking, but in those peach blossoms eyes. The sharpest blade was hidden in them. It is the same for Princess Ming and too. You had never go to the Ken country, yet you had profound grievances with her. Shen Miao continued to keep her silence, clearly so close that there were some ambiguous position. But her gaze gradually got cold. You have been living in the Ding capital since young, and the further place that you went was the Zhao Chun city. In those two years in the Zhao Chun city, you have not stepped into any other place. So it is not possible for you to have been to the Liu province, and impossible to have met the princess of the Qin country. His voice floated in the night, bringing a light coldness of the early winter that could almost seep into a person's heart. What do you want to say? Shen Miao looked at him. He spoke lowly, with an elegant and rich low voice that was sultry but made one's heart palpitate. He said, "Are you Shen Miao?" For a moment. Goosebumps rose on Shen Miao's entire body. It seemed as if there was a fine cold wind that poured down from the top of her head, and in a short moment, her entire body became icy cold. She had met a lot of people, and relying on her experience of an empress in her previous life, those people were just one mask after another. There were good and bad masks that one expected, but only when facing this seemingly cynical purple robe youth. She was a living person because one did not know under that mask what kind of face was it. In the past lifetime, Shen Miao's impression of Zi Jingxing was a handsome youth who died before his prime, and in this lifetime, knowing his unfathomable depths, she now felt more and more terrified. All the things she did made others suspicious, but Zi Jingxing actually suspected if she was Shen Miao or not. She was not Shen Miao. She was Empress Shen. Zi Jingxing dared to think about it, and he was actually very close to the truth. This kind of discomfort that brought about when one secret was almost glimpsed made Shen Miao to panic for a moment. But she did not do anything and just stared at Zi Jingxing's face before finally smiling lightly. She often smiled with a dignified warmth, a gentle smile as if nothing mattered. When facing Zi Jingxing. Most of the time, it was attacking by innuendo, a cold smile that her skin was smiling, but her flesh was not. Her current smile now seemed to be a magnolia that bloomed at night, containing a touch of delicate fragrance that wafted over completely innocently. But that smile was only for a short moment, and very quickly her face became cold. Under the heavens, not everyone is like your Highness Prince Ruai. Zi Jingxing's playful smile slightly paused. One was unaware if Shen Miao was Shen Miao or not, but Zi Jingxing was, after all, no longer Zi Jingxing. The little Marquis of the residence of the Marquis of Lin and was now Prince Ruai. Perhaps others felt it strange that this was the same person. After all, Zi Jingxing previously had no relations with the Great Liang. You really do not like to be at even a little disadvantage at all. 
Zi Jingxing stood up and his eyes converged before saying with a smile but not a smile, ought to be Shen Miao. He seemed to be lamenting to himself yet also seemed to be talking to Shen Miao, so many secrets, really expend a great deal of effort just to inquire, why does Prince Ruai not let go of me? Shen Miao looked at him, regardless of whether I have secrets or not, it does not matter to Prince Ruai at all, as luck would have it, I am interested in your secret. Zi Jing Xing leisurely said, moreover after thinking, it seemed that in the Ming Chi there seem is only you that is trustable. Shen Miao did not get angry but instead laughed, Prince Ruai had forgotten that there is still Su Ming Feng and Princess Rong Xin. Zi Jing Xing smiled gently, no one told you before that one should not mention about the past, one did not know why but under the lamplight, even though the smug smile on his lips was still elegant and flirtatious, there seemed to be some loneliness. Shen Miao said expressionlessly, I only request Prince Ruai not to intervene in this matter. It seems that everything has been thought out. Zi Jing Xing raised his brows, really amazing. Shen Miao's eyes hanged down and heard Zi Jing Xing speaking again. The princess of the Qin country would not leave the matter at that. I am also aware of it without the reminder. Shen Miao fiercely glared at him. One still have to thank Prince Ruai for lending a helping hand today. With Princess Ming and jealous character and her seemingly obsession with Zi Jingxing, seeing Zi Jingxing helping Shen Miao, she would be bound to vent her anger out on Shen Miao. She is not your adversary. Zi Jingxing naturally reached his hand to rub Shen Miao's head, but was fling away by Shen Miao and looked pitifully at his fingers. Shen Miao did not want to speak. Princess Ming and did not have any brains so she was not worried at all, so the most important was still Huang Fu Hao. In fact this time Huang Fu Hao and Princess Ming and why they came over from the Qin country, was for the matter on the alliance with the Ming Qi. The Ming Qi was in a rush to have good relations with the Qin country because the great Liang was eyeing covetously like a tiger watching its prey. No matter what, one must not let Fu Ziyu Yi and Huang Fu Hao mix together. Naturally one had to spend all efforts to undermine the tacit understanding of two countries' alliance. Shen Miao's gaze fell involuntarily on Zi Jing Xing. In this game of chess that encompasses the entire land under the heavens, she did not know what kind of game the great Liang was taking. She died too early in her previous life. Thus she did not know what happened at the end. What kind of scenario would Zi Jingxing be in? He most likely would not die in combat, but like a cicada that shed its carapace he returned to the Great Liang to be his Prince Ruai. Zi Jingxing noticed her gaze and laughed. What are you doubting again? Shen Miao watched him firmly. When does Prince Ruai intend to return to the Great Liang? Cannot bear? Zi Jingxing smiled and glanced at her before looking out the window. Do not worry, for the time being one will not leave yet. He said, the play between Huang Fu Hao and Prince Ding, this prince also wished to watch it to the end. Shen Miao's heart moved as Zi Jingxing said, do not you also want to watch? One do not understand the meaning of Prince Ruai's words. Shen Miao spoke one thing but meant another. Zi Jingxing bent down to pick the black cloak on the floor. The cloak was soaked with the water from the pond and was thrown casually into a ball. For a moment his face stiffened but still casually spoke, Shen Miao, you and me are the same type of people. Your Highness is the descendants of aristocrats. This official's daughter is like dust, unworthy to be of par, unduly humble. The lips of the purple-robed youth hooked up. You are the same as this prince, born to be above all. Until there was no longer that person figure in the room and the candlelight seemed to have gradually gone down, Shen Miao sat still in front of the table, as her state of mind due to the words that Zi Jingxing said before he left, took a long time to calm down. The same as this prince, born to be above all. Could it be that Zi Jingxing had discovered any inkling of it? But this was not possible. She once again thought carefully through all the encounters she had with Zi Jingxing in her previous life, and there was no intersection at all, not even a word was said. Shen Miao keep thinking over and over, when she suddenly found out that she had wasted too much time on this matter, thinking of how Zi Jingxing unfathomably disrupted her life 
anger rose in her heart. But at the other end in Prince Ru Ai's residence, Zi Jingxing returned to a room. This room was for sleeping and was almost an exquisite sleeping chambers. He threw the cloak in his hands casually and wiped his hands with a silk cloth. A ball of white thing pounced out from a corner and kept tugging and biting that black cloak letting its head loose on the thing. Zi Jingxing watched coldly at that fur ball playing with the cloak, before picking it up from the floor. What kind of conduct is this? His face was filled with dislike. The white tiger cub sneezed and its claws clasped onto Zi Jingxing collar, before Zi Jingxing threw it to the nest by the corner of the bed expressionlessly. Tai Yi! Zi Jingxing said, a black figure swept in from outside, what orders does Master have? Zi Jingxing pointed at the cloak on the floor. The corner of Tai Yi's mouth pursed. That was a cloak made from black lion fur that was hard to acquire even with thousand tails of gold. There was only one piece of black lion fur cloak in the Great Liang's treasure store and to be defiled like this, Tai Yi thought that even Emperor Yang Le would also have tears of sympathy. Take it and throw it away. Zi Jingxing started to undress. Tai Yi numbly picked up that piece of cloak and complied. Everyone knew that Prince Ru Ai had an excessive fondness for cleanliness that ordinary people did not have. This cloak was already ravaged beyond help, so Zi Jingxing would also not want it anymore. Moreover no one dared to secretly keep the things that Prince Ru Ai wore before, so Tai Yi seemed to be looking at tails flowing away. Just as he reached the door, he heard Zi Jingxing said, Wait, Tai Yi looked back. Zi Jingxing hesitated for a moment before frowning. Never mind, wash it and keep it. Tai Yi was surprised for a moment before nodding in delight, and flew out of the door while holding the cloak. His face was filled with gratification. It is good that Master finally understood not to be extravagant. This was the best, then one can hold up the entire future of the Great Liang. The Ding capital ushered in the first snow of this winter. The snowflakes rustled as they covered everything, the snow white color was truly adorable. Upon entering winter, the females on the streets had begun to wear a different variety of embroidered coat robes and wear now a variety of velvet cloaks, which was extremely elegant. In such a snowy day like this, as one hold an umbrella in one hand and walk in solitude, one would find it very tasteful. In the western courtyard of the Shen residence, there was someone standing in front of the courtyard watching the snow flying around. Young Lady King do not go in and sit. In such a weather outside, do be careful not to catch a cold. The Ding capital is not as warm as the Liu province. The wind in the winter here is very cold. Someone said with a smile, dressed in a goose egg yellow wide sleeve top and a light red Ruai skirt with hundreds of birds, it was elegant and supple including leaving a Jiayu bun. If one were to look from afar, one would thought that it was some family young lady. This person was Chen Rikayu. The person standing at the side of the courtyard turned over. The simple snow green blue long dress was worn very elegantly and moving. Chang Zai King smiled. There is little snow in the Liu province. In an entire winter, there would only snow a few rare times. The snow that falls in the Ding capital is truly lovely. One want to take a good look. Chen Rikayu smiled, appreciating the snow and discussing about wine is an elegant matter. Young Lady King is indeed tasteful. She said, in the future, if Young Lady King keeps staying in the Ding capital, after seeing it a few times, this would no longer be viewed it as uncommon. It comes down every year, making it so very cold. Chang Zai King merely smiled and did not speak. Both of them were gentle and refined, seemingly like daughters from a respectable, cultured and scholarly family. Each move and action warmed the heart and delighted the eyes. It was as if they were a pair of sisters. Chen Rikayu pulled Chang Zai King's hands. No matter how much young Lady King likes this snow, one must not stay in this courtyard for too long else cold air will enter the body. There is a brazier in the room, it is better to go to the room for a sit. Chang Zai King also did not decline, thus the both of them entered the room hand in hand. After entering the room, the maid sent in hot tea for the two of them. Chen Rikayu took the lead and picked up the teacup to take a sip before looking at Chang Zai King with a smile. 
I was originally thinking that our Shen family was short of a sister to experience the delicateness of the tea with me, but one was unable to search for one. Now that you are here, I am very happy, third Furin has treated with great kindness. Chang Zai King also smiled. Young Lady King's temperament is a delight, anyone would also like. Chen Rikayu said, I feel like old friends at the first meeting with you and also know that you are an intelligent and elegant person. You and me are kindred spirits, but do not know a few days back how was it with my eldest Sao. After pausing, Chen Rikayu lamented, My eldest Sao is from a military lineage and do not know these tea stuff, but she is straightforward and has a good heart. One do not know if you were scared? These words had some meaning of sounding out. Chang Zai King lightly stroked the teacup lid and replied docilely, Eldest Furin is very good, and also spoke to me of many interesting things that one had never heard before. Zai King is very grateful as she did not refrain due to Zai King's identity. I just knew it. Chen Rikayu nodded her head, you are this sensible and eldest Sao is candid and straightforward, naturally you will get along. Did young lady King meet eldest brother? Chang Zai King shook her head. It was already very late that day and General Shen had yet to return, so I returned back first. One thought that it would not be late to go visit on another day. Chen Rikayu's smile became somewhat deepen, it is good to visit another day, after all we are all one family. Now that one is also living in the Ding capital, it is much nearer and everything is also very convenient. Just as they were talking, one saw a maid holding an invitation coming in from outside. Her seeing that Chen Rikayu was present, greeted Chen Rikayu first before handing the invitation over to Chang Zai King and said, Young lady, this is an invitation that was received from the main door. Chen Rikayu's eyes flashed and she smiled. Young lady King had only come to the Ding capital since a short time and had already made such good friends that one actually send an invitation over. One do not know which family is it? Chang Zai King opened up the invitation to take a look and smiled. Third Furin thoughts has strayed off. The people that I know in the Ding capital are only people from the Shen residence. How would there be friends? This invitation is from the eldest Shen Furin. Eldest Sao. Chen Rikayu was startled for a moment and her gaze that was on Chang Zai King contained some traces of surprise, it seemed that Eldest Sao really likes you. Originally, when Eldest Sao was staying in the residence, one rarely seen her sending an invitation to others. As she said, she looked very happy for Chang Zai King, it seems that you both are destined to be familiar at first sight. I am somewhat jealous. Chang Zai King smiled. Third Furin is making fun of me again. The day in the invitation is today. Chen Rikayu took a look at the invitation in Chang Zai King's hands and said in shock, Why not young lady go over now to take a look? One fear that it is too early at present. Chang Zai King was somewhat hesitant. Chen Rikayu smiled as she patted her hands, Why are you being shy? One need to know that we are all one family and you should just regard it as dropping in. Moreover with eldest Sao's character, for you to push and pull, she would feel unhappy and will cause a misunderstanding. Chang Zai King looked at that invitation as Chen Rikayu continued speaking, in fact, not to hide it from you, I have also some selfish motives. I was thinking that if you have a good relationship with eldest Sao, in the future it would be easier on the misunderstanding with eldest brother and eldest Sao. This will have to be depended on you. After speaking, she gave a sigh. Third Furin must say that. Chang Zai King quickly said, The Shen family sheltered Zai King. One's heart is filled with gratefulness. Moreover a few day back when one went to see eldest Shen Furin, she was an open-minded person. So one think that it was only a temporary misunderstanding. I will go, and if there is an opportunity, one will help to explain. Third Furin need not mention it, as I will also do it. Chen Rikayu was very pleased when she heard this, I just knew that you are sensible. When she was speaking, she smoothly took off a bracelet and forcefully put it on Chang Zai King's hands. Chang Zai King wanted to decline but Chen Rikayu said, this bracelet is not worth much money, it is just that the workmanship is great. I see that you are not a greedy person so if things are too expensive, 
you will not accept, accept this bracelet, in the future, you would not go wrong to dress up when visiting eldest brother and eldest sow. One cannot let others look down on the Chang family. If you do not think about yourself, you have to think of the the Chang family. These words were said as if they came from the heart. Chang Zai King took every word and sentence into consideration. Chang Zai King no longer refused and only said, Third fear and good treatment of Zai King one would remember in one's heart. What are you talking about? We are all a family. Chen Rikayu stood up and looked outside, young lady king first tidy up, I would not disturb. Taking advantage that the snow is not heavy yet, go out first so that one can return earlier at night. She then instructed the two maids waiting on Chang Zai King on some matters before leaving the room. After Chen Rikayu left, Zhao Mama put away Chang Zai King's invitation and said, Young lady really want to go and meet that eldest Shen Furen? Yes. After Chen Rikayu left, Chang Zai King's smile lighted. Even though it was still gentle and elegant, but it was as if she was a different person, not as sincere as she was just now. That eldest Shen Furen. Zhao Mama was somewhat hesitant. She is a good person. Chang Zai King sat in front of the table and opened a small box of rouge and dapped it on her lips. The color of the rouge was very light and with a thin layer, it was like there was a light pink color on her lips, making her appear even more graceful. A good person. This time this old servant can rest assured. Zhao Mama sighed in relief. Yes. Chang Zai King looked at herself in the mirror but one did not know if she was talking to herself or others. I am also relieved. Outside, Chen Rikayu returned to Kayu Shuiyu on and held a hand warmer. When she turned around, she meet Shen Yu, mother. Shen Yu said, Why do you keep going to Chang Zai King's courtyard these days? One did not see you for a few times. Looking for me for what? Chen Rikayu caressed Shen Yu's head. Shen Yu was getting older, and even though the countenance of a flower and face like the moon has appeared, her expectations were high and it was a problem to just leave it alone, since by delaying, one would be a spinster. Chen Rikayu knew that her daughter adored Prince Ding in her heart, but the now even if she had a method to let Shen Yu marry Fu Zayu Yi as a concubine, Shen Yu would not be willing. Because of Shen Yu's marriage, Shen Wan had been angry with Chen Rikayu for a few rounds. Chen Rikayu loved her daughter dearly. So all the aristocratic disciples and sons that Shen Wan found, Chen Rikayu thought of several ways to refuse them. The embroidery workshop has come out with new clothing styles. Shen Yu said, one wanted to let you take a look to see which is better looking. Looking at her daughter who was like a flower, Chen Rikayu had somewhat of a headache. What is the use of these flowery patterns? You are already very beautiful. If you have energy to be bothered about these, then go and learn from that person in the western courtyard. Western courtyard? Shen Yu was puzzled. Is mother talking about that Chang Zai King? What can be learnt from her? Chen Rikayu shook her head. There is so much to learn. If you had one third of her ability, I would feel assured. What kind of person Lu Zuyin was? Even though she treat others enthusiastically, she was not one who would send an invitation over after one meeting. To be unable to hold back and request a meet-up, it was the first time Chen Rikayu had seen this after being sisters-in-law with Lu Zhu Yan. Chen Rikayu knew that Chang Zai King made others feel comfortable and would not raise any hostility, but to be able to get so close with Lu Zhu Yan like this, was indeed too much of a surprise for her. However this was a good thing for Chen Rikayu. She pointed at Shen Yu's forehead and said with some resent about iron for not becoming steel. In short, you should learn from her in the future. It is more useful than you looking at the different styles of clothes. In the Shen mansion, Gu Yu was styling Shen Miao's hair as she spoke, young lady, to use Furin's name to send an invitation to that young lady of the Chang family. Would one be in trouble if Furin knows about it? What is the difference to use my mother's name or mine? Shen Miao lightly said, one is after all, family. But why did young lady not use one's own name? Jing's was cleaning the table and was curious when she heard this. Shen Miao had stolen Lu Zhu Yan's seal and sent an invitation over to the Shen residence, 
making all the maids in the room so shocked that their jaws dropped. It was alright if she was posing as Lu Zhu Yan on other stuff, but to pose as Lu Zhu Yan and invite a young lady that one was not even remotely close, one felt that it was somewhat a waste of resources. I have no relations with her so with no cause and no reason, why do one invite her over for? Jing's and Gu Yu glanced at one another. Both did not know how to continue with that. Yes, it was correct that Shen Miao and Chang Zai King did not have any relations with one another, so when one stole Lu Zhu Yan's seal to send an invitation to Chang Zai King to visit today, one did not see Shen Miao happy at all. Shen Miao's eyes hung down. Lu Zhu Yan was not in today, so it was ideal to send the invitation earlier. She eventually have to meet up alone with this young lady of the Chang family. Lu Tan was drawn away very early in the morning, and there was only Shen Miao in the entire residence that could make the decision. Just as one was thinking, one heard a young servant coming over to report that the young lady from Chang family had arrived. So fast. Jing's was somewhat surprised. Xin Miao gently smiled. People who had things to request naturally would not be able to hide the ambitiousness in one's heart. One was unable to see it in the past because one was in a situation and one did not care about all the matters in the Shen family. But the past and present could not be compared. She wanted to see how profound could Chang Zai King's abilities and skills be. Chang Zai King was led by the young servant to the main hall of the Shen mansion to wait. The servant brought a cup of hot tea as Chang Zai King quietly sized up the Shen mansion. The Shen mansion and the Shen residence were different. The Shen residence was the official residence of the old general, and particular attention was paid to the feng shui of the place. Add in old Shen Furin's habits, and it was somewhat extravagant. At the other side perhaps because Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan were martial arts practitioners, the courtyards of the Shen mansion were spacious and the main hall was also square-shaped, looking very awe-inspiring. Even though the ornaments placed were simple, one did not know why. But there was a dignified feeling. When Chang Zai King came over the first time, she did not sized up carefully but now upon looking, she felt a layer of fine sweat appearing on her body, as if one could not just sit around voluntarily upon coming to this place. The servants all minded their own cleaning and no one talked to her. Chang Zai King's manners had always been good so there was no reason for her to urge. She waited until her tea had gotten cold. But there were no movements from outside. Chang Zai King then got hold of a servant to ask why was Lu Zhu Yin not coming, and if something had happened. That servant was all smiles and had a polite attitude. After saying that he will go and ask, he disappeared without a trace, and one did not know what was going on. It continued to as such for several times in succession, making Chang Zai King somewhat unable to sit still. During the first time meeting with Lu Zhu Yan, she was not far off from her expectation of the other person. She was a frank person and was very enthusiastic in treating others, but why would one make things difficult this time? For the first time, Chang Zai King's heart was uncertain. The servants coming and going seemed to be watching her, but yet seemed not to be looking at her. She finally could not sit still and just as she wanted to get up to leave, she heard that someone behind her laughed. King Yi had waited very long. Really sorry about it. Just now one had gotten the clothes wet and had to regroom again, thus the delay. Chang Zai King was startled and quickly stood up, and saw Shen Miao walking in from the door with a few servants following. The young female was wearing a jade green pattern brocade cloak and holding a hand warmer. Most likely she had felt warm upon entering the room. The cloak was taken off revealing a flower-embroidered purple long robe. The rare thing was that she did not look old wearing it but there was an air of nobility. That shade of purple contrasted with the young female's jade-like complexion, delicate but was as if one was walking in the palace. Each step was taken with a smile on her face, looking very noble. All of a sudden, Chang Zai King's brain was spinning for a moment. She had met many people and also seen a number of females with elegant and graceful presence and bearing, including Shen Yu who was kept calm and collected by Chen Rikayu. But it was only Shen Miao that gave her a feeling of exclaiming in surprise. That day it was still alright beside Lu Zhu Yin but now that she appeared alone, she grabbed all of the limelight immediately. 
and actually gave others a compelling pressure, fifth young lady. Chang Ziyiking glanced behind Shen Miao. No need to search. Chen Miao gently smiled, it was me that sent you the invitation, King Yi.